This is Friday, July 12, 2013. We are at St. Thomas Church at Kurupandara in Kottayam district. This church belongs to the Archdiocese of Kottayam, the Knanaya Archdiocese. And uh, we are privileged to have Reverend Dr. Jacob Bellian, a scholar of Sri Malabar Liturgy. Tell us about your um, uh, academic background. You have two doctorates yeah. in uh, related to Sri Malabar liturgy. What was the first doctorate about? First doctorate was from Rome, originally it was on the uh, pre anaphoral of the Sri Malabar Kubana, a liturgical theological study. And the second one was from the University of Notre Dame, Indiana, USA, and that was on the Latinization of the Sierra Malabar liturgy from 1599 to 1603, four years. Why did you choose those particular four years? Uh, four years because that was the crucial one uh, where you find the changes that led to Latinization. Because of restoration, though the Synod of Diamba described it, it was actually at the time uh, which was uh, uh, in, in, in enforced those changes by preparing a taxa. We called it rasa of the Sarama that is of the discipline of three. Your first mass was it in uh, Syriac? Yeah, it was in Syriac in Rome. Uh, you celebrated your first mass in Rome? Rome, in St. Peter's Basilica. Uh, the two, the, all over the tomb of uh, St. Peter. How come? I was there uh, studying, I did my studies in Rome uh, from 15, no, 1958 to 65. Ah. So in 1961, he was ordained uh, by Bishop Farah because he was there available at that time. Because in those days, Bishop did not go to Rome frequently. So uh, our Bishop saw so that Farah uh, Bishop of Amaglam was there. And we are three priests, myself, another priest from Kota and Collaborable, the third priest from the Navran, from Manashi. So our prayer bishop said, uh, please, Bishop Warden, us two. So he ordered all the three. And that was the occasion. In St. Peter's Basilica. The holy, altar of the Holy Spirit. The ordination ceremony was in Latin or in Syriac? Uh, in Syriac. It was in Syriac, 1961. And the first Mass was in Syriac? first Mass was in Syriac, yeah. So who accompanied you for music? Um, our, our priests there, no. Uh, our priests and there are a few sisters and we practiced it and they did it. And actually the uh, second Mass was uh, transmitted via Vatican uh, Radio. Okay. So and then uh, when did you celebrate Mass in your hometown? Uh, it was in uh, 1965, uh, that is four years after my ordination. In only I didn't take. So it was the case. I, I went to Rome in 1958 ah. and only after seven years I did, did return. Uh, so that was the situation of those days. Ah, okay. Nobody used to hurry up back in one year, uh, six months now. So I waited for that. Ordained in 1961 in Rome, an unusual event that you celebrated your first Mass in St. Peter's Basilica in Syriac. In Syriac. And uh, it took four years for you to finish your studies and come back to your hometown in Olasha. Olasha. And the first Mass was in Syriac here yes. too. And then... Meanwhile, uh, one thing to be noted, we did the celebrate the Mass in the restored way. The Sierra Mulva restored text, the, the close, the restored text. Because um, in 1962, already uh, the text was available in Rome. And we preached there, we started sell, making use of uh, the restored text in Syria. Henceforward, what were your activities connected with Syriac language and liturgy? See, I was appointed professor of uh, liturgy 
സോറി ആൻഡ് ശ്രീ അറ്റ് ദി വടവാദു സമ്മേരി കോട്ടയം ആൻഡ് അറ്റോർഡൻ്റ് ജി ആൻഡ് ഓൾസോ ഐ യു ടീച്ച് സിറിയ ഫോർ ദി ഫിഗർ ഫോർ ക്ലാസ് വൈൽ വാസ് ദർ സോ ദാറ്റ് വാസ് ഗുഡ് തിങ് ഫോർ മീ ടു ഗെറ്റ് മോർ ഫമിലിയർ വിത്ത് സിറിയ ലാംഗ്വേജ് ആൻഡ് ദാറ്റ് മൈ സ്റ്റഡീസ് ഓൾസോ ഹെൽപ് ടു ഗോ ഡീപ് ഇൻ ടു ദി ലാംഗ്വേജ് ആൻഡ് അഗെയിൻ ഐ വാസ് ആസ് ടു ഡു the restoration of the liturgical texts and you know all our texts were in uh, uh, syria in syria originally and then we were uh, latinized but still they were in a uh, latinized version of syria so in order to restore i had to go through the original uh, syria plus the restored the latinized syria liturgy um and therefore there was a lot of sri coming back to the present times i have heard that you are one of the zealous priests trying to promote and preserve the sri tradition so what are the different ways in which you try to encourage people to appreciate the sri tradition uh, first of all to begin with when i came back from rome but i brought along was brought along was 50 volumes of the uh, old caldian breviary three volumes 150 volumes i brought back and i, I left kept in the library of the uh, sundar apostolic seminary and we started reciting the divine office in syria so students were introduced uh, to syria uh, uh, canonic lovers so that is a great thing and then afterwards what i did was when i uh, uh, i taught uh, brothers songs which could be uh, sri hymns uh, parts of piece of uh, sri songs which can be sung either in the parish church or in in other uh, occasions the sosse sosse da seleta and means for uh, the blessing of the uh, statues of saints and martyrs and then uh, what festivals you no know? could you please sing uh, sosse da seleta sura tehave the time when i was in the seminary five batches uh, i actually i taught almost 1500 uh, uh, students but about the problem some is and then very senior is here in india and also in rome and america mendo uh, park california so all those students were uh, uh, induced to get interest in sri singing so uh, because my belief was this is a part of legacy of the zero malabar church atias mundaran beautifully said that uh, the music sri music and sri liturgy actually uh, owe to the kranaya uh, uh, immigration uh, in india in 345 because they bought brought the uh, texts of the rubana brothers of the bishop and the priests and adigans and people so they brought the text plus also the uh, liturgical singing syriac singing mm, melody the way of singing because he says um, it is one of the ancient uh, way of singing syriac uh, hymns actually i also got the same impression while participating in some of the uh, sri symposium international sri symposium and uh, there uh, talking about the sri music they said 
the singing of uh, sri melody in kerala is more archaic and more uh, true to the original because the sri singing in the middle east uh, rock and soul was really affected influenced by arabic music so this is a pure uh, syriac uh, singing mode that's what they they said i'm happy about that so i tried uh, to uh, promote it and i to a certain extent in most of our parishes uh, we sing almost all parishes but the schools we sing this law se rasleta and then sagri and mar sing at the krishna sadista sagadi nen malala ho sa valna su sa bla phola ga you know young fish they learn this and they sing and then uh, the other thing uh, several of our fish uh, also uh, are interested in having syriac uh, sung mass in their parishes so practically every month uh, at least two uh, syriac mass i sing in any from place anywhere anywhere in the area or south side uh, in the diocese uh, i do and of course because uh, people are interested and people are interested uh, they take this uh, uh, part for liturgy and tradition and the uh, belt a uh, patrimony so that is so uh, really encouraging when you see that people are moved or uh, the people accept uh, this uh, syriac uh, singing monsignor you spoke about teaching the melodies to the younger generation of priests what is the extent of syriac literacy do they learn to read and write see we used to have a syriac class in the minor seminary then some of them learned syriac in major seminary and some also enrolled so they are doing um, doctorates and higher studies and um, so i think at least a few priests are very much interested in uh, syriac but i recommended some to go to suri uh, to learn more uh, syriac and a couple of them did uh, they took they, they took ma from there and that is uh, had some uh, semester courses there and some are really interested in saying uh, the words of institution in syria we celebrate sometimes i sing the words of institution can you avinanma durani rashi gaura ശാ <laughs> സമീതാവുമാനായിസ്വാഹോൽമിന്നെസ് they uh, sing amen correctly uh, and also i had a chance to teach uh, the catechism teachers and they also were given i gave a uh, text of the uh, i prepared some leaflet so we there classes and they also are interested in singing in the parish so the priest begins at the uh, mm.
When you said uh, you prepared the leaflet for catechism teachers, uh, you did it in Malayalam script? Malayalam, Malayalam. In Malayalam yes. script. Yes. Is there any Syriac literacy among lay people in the Knanaya diocese, archdiocese? Uh, among the lay people? Uh, I think only one thing can say they are interested in the Syriac liturgy and Syriac music. And that's the thing. And uh, some of them sing. So uh, when I uh, start singing Kandishala, 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 El Sana, then sing this people joy. Several places, you know, people they do. Uh, because they are aware of memory, memories of the past. And like, recently uh, they have taught here and there. But nobody is learning to read or write Syriac. Uh, among us, the eleven, no. Nobody. And I recommended that they go to Syria for a course. Uh, but uh, until, until today, nobody did. What do you think is the future of the Syriac language in Kerala? I think uh, unless we are very earnest, it can simply disappear. Uh, because though the language itself, Malayam, has so many Syriac words uh, entered into it, and people use uh, Syriac words as Malayalam, because Kasa, Pirasa, all those things, you know, there is no problem. It's a uh, uh, Malayalam. And uh, Mahar Nishamsha, Mahar, all those. Mahamodisa. Mahamodisa, Budasa, all those things, you know. So, when you talk about uh, this uh, Sri language, I say these are the words we frequently use. So, that's uh, the richness. And uh, so, that uh, uh, is there. People enjoy it, they are happy about it. But, um, I don't know, uh, and they sing. Uh, singing is the, rather than studying the, then. But some of the priests are interested in uh, saying the, singing the words of the said, no, unless you know, so you, no way, no way. But there are few, the children uh, sing, because they know the language, uh, they studied the, uh, the, the main seminary, or main seminary, or even by themselves personally, so in, they know the meaning of the words of the they sing. So I think that is good, because uh, the people get the impression that uh, we are Syrians, and this is a literary, and say Kurbana. Okay. So, so there is more hope for the survival of the language through the liturgical song text. No, no, that's the only thing. Yeah. I think that we do. And uh, we should be insistent on uh, the on, um, teaching Sudet language is needed. Because a priest should know so that in the future, at least we, uh, myself and another priest. Uh, three priests, you know, used to uh, sing Suryak Mass. Uh, one priest, uh, he got lost his sound, so he left his house out of the scene. Now, only two of us are uh, in the diocese who can uh, easily uh, sing Suryak uh, Purbana. So, I am letting uh, two more priests who so studied a name of Suryak and they are practicing and hopefully they will come back. This morning's recording session brought to our attention a song in Tamil or Tamil influenced song that is set to the tune of Baramariyam. Were you surprised? Uh, was this the first time you encountered such a... I just heard about it but never had a chance to uh, hear it. But uh, today is the first time I listened to it because this guy just told me that the Barmarium is uh, used for a melody or a song. I, first time I heard it. Okay, right. Because that is a very interesting... Uh, yeah, that's right. Very interesting. Uh -huh. And... Phenomenon, eh? Right, right, right. So, even the melody was captured, but the people used the local language because before 10th century, mm. we didn't have Malayalam. So probably this melody came during the Tamil period. 
can we assume that uh, no i say sirik uh, influence uh, musical influence in our folk songs mm. for instance sir uh, putan bana of uh, amos pavi mm-hmm. uh, plus uh, apran paatukal mm. uh, some songs mm. uh, we are familiar with and several other songs are uh, influenced by sirik uh, melodies for instance uh, even uh, margangal mm. margi third palam is kareyum gadelu moru uh, das uh, das we sing na gumara tu bola a maune na i think there is some uh, interest mm. uh, also and the post baslama you mentioned about the influence of sirik melodies on the folk songs in kerala could you please expand on it and uh, sing an example the vandana vada that means in the first uh, prayer song of madhun gali uh, is this me kadinda iliyu mai mel to closely observe Ushva Slama of the various service Ushva Slama Umbra Samya Lam Se Pare Kadu Kaya Me A shade of interest Okay, uh, when you sang Meikan in the Pelium you sang Mail Mail Tondum was it uh, intentional or uh... because uh, uh, so the this song is so ancient uh, you can, uh, much of a tamil influence mm-hmm. uh, make make aninda feeli press mail mail thondum mail all these are uh, uh, tamil expressions and influence influences of the uh, make aninda till 1962 uh, when uh, the liturgy became vernacular until then you used to sing uh, solemn high mass and use the same text for requiem mass yes. so how did you shift melodically from solemn high mass into the requiem mass uh, you sing the solemn mass solemnly solemn the solemnity when reduced and made it into a simple form it becomes the uh, musical uh, for the requirement examples example okay. uh, the simple mass we have the glory to god in the highest this was the la la amra solemn kaswadala ala a ha tamara a ha ma from here comes down and some this kaswadala ala what about the our father unara aslama gaura gavala ina shavol nalal nyomi avundu asneya but the mu- the melody is the same, the melody is the same. 
Oh, okay. So you don't give the embe- the the it, it it is sung faster uh-huh. without much elaboration. Yeah, elaboration. But yeah. but the melody is the same. same, same. Also, right before the fashion, we have uh, Barekwa. Ah. Uh, the Lord I am worthy. Uh, Barekwa. 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 Monsignor, you sang the entire text without looking, without the help of a printed book. So this is part of your system? It is, is the entire Mass in your memory? Yes, the whole Mass is in I can sing it and recite it. Okay. Okay. Just because of two reasons. Because of my love towards the language and the music and the text. One. Secondly, I was forced in a way not to look at the text because my eyes are not good. Even if I look uh, straight uh, at the book, I won't see. I can't see. So, <laughs> that's why it's a God helps. <laughs> very nice, very nice. So, are there other examples of uh, the same text sung differently? Um, in the solemn hymn mass and uh, requiem mass. Sure. Uh, for solemn mass, you have so many elements to be sung. Eh? Mm. Whereas in simple mass, uh, you don't sing all the uh, songs that sung for the high mass. Before the uh, communion, uh, return of to conviction. Forgiveness. Okay. Now, so you had solemn high mass. Then you had Rasa, mm-hmm. most, solemn of the Bada, huh? most solemn form of the Kurbana, and then the symbol form. And the symbol form. And then Requiem Mass. Yeah. So, so musically, uh, the distinction, the difference is mostly between the Requiem Mass and the Solemn High Mass. What? Uh. Uh, we didn't use, we didn't use sing for symbol Mass. It's symbol Mass. Assembly recited, Otta Kurubana, assembly was recited. Mm. 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 Different songs only in uh, the Haimas and in the uh, Rasa. So the special songs in Rasa, uh, are there special melodies that were not used in the solemn Haimas? Yeah, uh, see. For the uh, sometimes we use those solemn hymns. For instance, Rami Shukana, we had 
uh, and Inya in between. Oh, tell me about that. That is an interesting. Inya, because uh, <coughs> instead of giving a bit, uh, this singing Inya. Pameshu kana minnala mare kol. So that's the Imam Rabbi Tuz. Pameshu kana min Maria Hasa Inya. That goes on. I mean, let me concentrate on this thing. Okay. Um, uh huh. Ah. Or the summon, for what is sorry? Yes, yes, yes. Summon in Ramsar, Lalo, Ayaying, as to smoker, Lanchayane, Rana, so far the bit uh, is filled with the Inya. This is for Requiem Mass. Uh, no, no, for Rasa. Rasa, Rasa. <clears throat> Uh, we had a different melody last time when we did the recording. Oh, the summon ing a tarariram tarariram ing a tarariram tarariram. The most of the rasa, so much of the other one is symbol for me. I'm not sure again, symbol for me. So, for those who are f not familiar with the tradition, Inga is just a meaningless syllable, uh, incorporated there to fit in the rhythm, the meter. And uh, how did people react to such, an, such a weird practice of incorporating a, a vocable or a nonsense syllable into such a sacred text? But it's uh, rhythmic, so uh, the fiction uh, for the melody, oh, this the man in a mamsaram malalo engine. So it fits in for properly and fitly. Talam, very good. So priest uh, didn't have a priest didn't have a problem. Actually, actually when I was in Iraq, uh, uh, I heard them singing with Inga. Really? Yeah, yeah. With Inga. Uh, Iraq, we had a mass. We did some mass. Ah. And then we had some people. Uh, so they told me that you Inga. How come they got Inga and not an Arabic vocable? Did they take it from India? I don't know. Uh, no, it is me. I think originally this name from there. Inga. Is there a way of taking Inga in Malayalam? No. I don't think so. So I think uh, it came from there. That is what is, uh, now that we found it there, it should be the origin maybe from there. Is this the only nonsense syllable that is used or is there other handa or... Uh, no, 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 this is the only nonsense. <laughs> nonsense syllable. syllable yeah. I see. So possibly it came from Iraq. Yeah, that's what I think. That's Iraq what area. They do. Uh, so with Ima. Uh -huh. <laughs> Uh, now, when you wish you were in Iraq, in uh, 1990, we, um, myself, Bishop Gumishiri, Bishop and uh, four of us went for a uh, study tour. Uh. So, we visited actually only 14 and other 14 diocese uh, and bishops there. And the, 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 the our idea was to find out where where this Kina Kanya was. Uh, it was the purpose. But we had some some uh, some masses here and there. Um, then on that occasion, I found that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. When so did you celebrate mass with priests from Iraq? Yeah, and the people because in Mosul we celebrated mass in Syria. And the people are responding in Syria. So there are a uh, couple of, a few villages where people still uh, use the Syriac language. Yeah. Were, they, were they surprised at your pronunciation? Um, 
What is the possibility of using the Syriac melodies and adapting them to compose new melodies in Malayalam? Actually, uh, when the Malayalam mass began, all the hymns were uh, in Syriac melodies, all of them, all of them. And still people use, because they are simple and uh, uh, to a type of demo, it's very simple and people all together can sing, uh, for community to sing it is good. And um, also, because of the fact that we are introduced for the uh, funeral services, uh, everybody knows this Syriac community, all sing here. So that's a uh, 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 good thing. And um, I think any, well, one thing we have to do is either stick on to this Syriac origin melody or uh, modify uh, drastic modification, otherwise, you know, there can be confusion. Mm. So, this thing, you know. mm -hmm. So, you can base this uh, tune and make a new one, but, uh, um, but there should be some uh, original line there. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. otherwise, you see, later people don't know what is what. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and as I said, uh, the scholars agree that the way we sing here is more archaic and put to the original. Mm, so mm. that should be kept. Mm. But we can do uh, no problem. Mm, mm. Um, you see uh, that the uh, you know, song we heard about Barmari, no? Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's a uh, very, very positive, you know? Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, uh, she said maybe you can try that. Yeah, because... You know, yeah, people like to put the, do that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I was recalling, remember the Requiem Mass in Malayalam that Father Abel uh, prepared the text and KK Arni Master composed. Mm -hmm. And the Sorghastidana. Sorghastidana Nitya Pudave Nintiru Namam Vartha Pedanam. Syriac melodies were beautifully adapted to Malayalam text. So maybe that is the next mission. The funny thing is, is no, uh, there's a beautiful thing, and Taitu is such a side. Hmm. Today, no? Yeah. People do not use it anymore. At least in uh, this area. Yeah. yeah. That is in the uh, uh, Magla Maria they do it. I don't think so. Yeah. But I, that's the thing. Uh, I think it has a, a beauty of its soul. Yes, yes. See, as I've seen, in the folklore, there is influence of Syriac uh, music. It is a natural influence. And uh, that uh, well, uh, can easily detect and appreciate. And master, he has composed uh, practically a new uh, system, making use of the Syriac melody uh, in the requiem mass. In the requiem mass, and it, uh, I think our people used to sing the for long time. Yeah, it stands out. It that stands out. Still, some people here and there will use it. No? So I like that. You know, the next step could be that we try to compose uh, new hymns based on the serious melodies. Uh, Consciously we have to uh, promote uh, Surik music this way also. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, Father can, you can uh, do that uh, good work uh, for the future of our mm -hmm. church. Mm -hmm. will will justify your existence. <laughs> Your work, you know, here you are. Yeah. Expertise in the field. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Monsignor, you, did you start the Vanisa? Pardon? The Vanisa, or uh, you started that institution. So, what are the activities and what, why? 
I talked with Bishop Pinochet at the time, Bishop Kotem. I interviewed him with some spiritual descender where people can come, uh, share their views, and have spiritual consolation and consultation. All these things. So he agreed to, and uh, he started that thing. And uh, there was actually uh, not many uh, such sendays in Kerala at the time. Only after that, uh, several people came home, they died, uh, some congregations, they looked into the working of the thing and they have started new uh, Sundays, new uh, like uh, Tuanisa. Uh, Which year? Uh, 1982. That's too many so good. And uh, I think it was good. And uh, yeah, another thing, yeah, important thing, Bishop Kunashiri, he had a great interest in making use of uh, Sirith names. He gave Sirith names to several of our institutions. And uh, like uh, Tuvanisa, uh, uh, Malfusa, uh, Hadusa, uh, this type of thing. So very, very so many institutions. Uh, and uh, people uh, are familiar with the thing, no problem. Once uh, we used to uh, prepare this uh, Tuvanisa, uh, institute. After a week, I was in uh, Bali, and then I saw a bus uh, ra just rushing with the board on it, Tuvanisa. Because it is a curious name, an exceptional name. One guy from this area, he put over for his uh, uh, car, bus, uh, order the bus. What is the meaning of uh, Tuvanisa? Uh, Tuvanisa, uh, Matta Mariam Tuvanisa, uh, the uh, blessed one. Uh, we used to have a uh, song uh, in the uh, Ladinia. Matta Mariam Duvanisa Matta Mariam Duvanisa That Duvanisa was uh, uh, the name given to this uh, Blessed One Blessed One or? Blessed One Duvanisa Mariam Duvanisa Matta Mariam Duvanisa Oh, okay Ah, ha, ha, ha And Hadusa? Hadusa means uh, uh, joy, uh, dance, and so on. That is the name going to the folklore center. And that place. Uh, and they are still active? Yeah, very high, very high. Oh. Uh, I myself, uh, 25 years as a director, uh, worked a lot. Marvin Billy was introduced in the youth festival, school youth festival, because of this institute. Mm -hmm. And uh, for that, I called uh, uh, some 33 Asans, who assisted at that time, Mangri Asans, half Asans, uh, Mundani, Ayara Mundani, Asan Mare. Some were very impressed by this little, but I called all of them, called all of them. They came. And we had 50 days of consultation at uh, Gadipuriti and uh, Sejmoor. And uh, some some of them, we have to systematize the whole thing because uh, each ashram used to do this in that additional homage and so on. And uh, as a result, we uh, uh, systematized the fourteen parents. I uh, recorded the music from different Sundays that also was you know uh, uh, systematized, uh, but not uh, doing violence to the origin. Eh? Uh, the same way, uh, not doing violence to the uh, signs and symbols of the But, uh, uh, and then the main thing was that this is a made dance, Madhungri. It used to be. But with the, my work in that, I found that the, the main uh, main fold cannot uh, continue, uh, number, uh, perpetuate. So I opened for the ladies. And we gave them the uh, dress of uh, our Soviet uh, women, Chatta and all those things, you know. And that clicked. And they have uh, 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 dominated, uh, dominated this stage. So now I'm trying to uh, make sure that there are a few male uh, marginalities. <laughs> yeah, that's what has done very well. Okay. So you were responsible for the transition I from. Male to female. Yeah, yeah. And you know, in a, uh, some 
eight months, I did 90 colleges all over Kerala because it, it was government said okay, uh, but we had to make sure there were teams there. And in order to get the approval, I produced a film, a 40 minutes uh, a color documentary film, and then presented the DJ uh, Rose uh, and the TNG people, and then they approved it. That was with Chamar Chondal? Uh, the same? Yeah, we go. Chamar Chondal was with me. He was a great helping hand. We together worked, and uh, it was a great blessing. And then you died after this great yes. service to the church and the society. Yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. So that was a wonderful day. Mm -hmm. Do you have a collection of uh, recordings of Margangali and other Suryak songs that do you have an archive of the music? Yeah, I have uh, uh, collected the matter only in CD forms, you know. When the cassette. Cas uh, cassette. Or spool. Uh, spool. Uh, ca cassettes. Ah. But I uh, transferred them to CD. Ah. Uh, some of them. But still some are in cassette form. So we have to uh, do something. Yeah. And I think uh, now that I'm glad that the rest is to the baby. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Currently, on an average, how many masses in Syriac do you celebrate in a year? In a year, um, a minimum of 50 to 20 masses. Definitely 20 masses. I do. And uh, I'm happy. And also, there's another priest. He might celebrate at least uh, 8 or 10. So, so, around 13 masses, we say, uh, in the visibility. I celebrate Mass in Rinalakuda, Tartuchur, and so on. Because they invite me, we are both the team. Right. Right. But are there any young priests who can carry on this tradition? See, I am trying to to have the sphere. Otherwise, you cannot do it, no? So, that too. And I have given the parents and the instructions and classes. And hopefully, uh, in a few couple of months, uh, one will be ready uh, to say. Are they good singers too? One will be ready. Uh, good and uh, singers, and uh, one sing good singer, and uh, use high level version of Syria. Otherwise, it's important. Uh, right. But many come uh, to asking uh, and know how and permission to celebrate Mass in, I don't know, celebrate, uh, say the words of institution in uh, Syria. And I say no, unless you know the language they support you. Right, 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 right. So right. On the other side, uh, about the singers, I don't find many youngsters picking up uh, the profession or taking up singing for the Syria choir. Yeah. See, sometime back I had a few youngsters. The problem with them was they got a job and some went to Delhi. Others went to America. This is the problem with us here. Uh, going outside the country, no? that's a the problem. Then I uh, started getting sisters. And uh, three of them uh, were with me uh, singing. And then one was transferred to Delhi. Another one uh, went to Germany. Only one is here. Sister is here, and then there is one more. Uh, oh, okay. 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 So it is. But I think I I think I should uh, concentrate on it. Otherwise, uh, these people. I had uh, two more uh, elderly people. They are still there, but they cannot uh, sing. You know. Mm. Uh, they, uh, one is eighty, no, ninety-nine, and you. So we are going to celebrate. Not ninety-nine. You. Ninety-nine. Ninety-nine. We are going to celebrate this next year, next uh, October. Can he sing? So. Yeah. Ah, ah, ah. Monsignor, thank you so much for sparing your time. In 1999, you came uh, to sing Barmariam at uh, St. Joseph's Monastery. And those songs were put into a CD, Kambil Maran, which got a lot of attention in the international uh, uh, monk, musical. Music, musical world. And um, you have precious experiences. And it is wonderful that you shared with us and uh, thank you very much.
Thank you very much, Father. I wish you good luck because you are doing wonderful work in this field and for continuing it. And I hope uh, that will bear fruit, abundant fruit. Eh? Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.